pretend I'm head of Volkswagen and I have to follow up the Volkswagen Amarok, which was a massive sales success with a second generation ute. Now this ute has to be desirable, it has to be packed full of tech and it has to be class leading. So what do I go out and do? Well, I go find the class leading ute in the segment at the moment, which is the Ford Ranger. I go and partner with Ford and I produce a cousin to the Ford Ranger, which uses a lot of that car's tech and also a lot of its features that make it really good and at the top of its game in the dual cab ute segment. And I put my own Volkswagen touches on it to make it the second generation Volkswagen Amarok. And what this has done is created a ute so desirable to existing Volkswagen Amarok owners that they're already prepared to jump over and upgrade into the second generation Amarok. And now how do I know that? Well, I've interviewed an owner in this review who's done exactly that. So there's a couple of different flavors in the Amarok range. You can get something like a work vehicle way down in the price range, or you can go all the way up to this. This is the Adventura model, which is gonna show you every option that this car comes with, and also is like the top of the range lifestyle model. I would say it's probably the best replacement for a rugged SUV if you don't wanna own an SUV. And if you want an even more rugged version of this, but it will have slightly less features, you can get the Amarok Panamericana, which I actually prefer the looks of just a little bit more. You need to get a petrol four cylinder, or you can get this one, which has a V6 three liter turbo diesel motor, which is probably gonna be the pick of the range for most people. But what isn't the same is that petrol four cylinder, which is actually taken from a Mustang EcoBoost, which is something that the Ranger lineup doesn't get, which I think is a pretty cool alternative to getting the diesel motor. Now, what are you getting? You're getting LED lights, you're getting this bright chrome front end, you're getting Amarok stamped on the front here. And I really do like the look of the Amarok compared to say some other Ford Rangers. I think it's just got more of a smoother and more muscular look rather than the very brutish and blocky front grill of the Ranger. Now, Amarok owners are proud of the fact that they get a turbo diesel V6. So that's why Volkswagen have kept the V6 badge here up front. Now this car is fitted with 20 one inch alloys, which are massive, but there's still heaps of room here in the wheel well for ground clearance. But yes, if you want some very showy wheels that you're gonna get them on the Adventura, but I don't think they look too bad considering how big this car is. Now you're getting chrome mirror caps here on the outside and this little nodule here is where you're gonna see one of your cameras for your 360 degree parking camera system. You're getting these side steps on the side here, but they do have a bit of movement in them. So they're not super confidence inspiring and something I wouldn't use as like rock sliders, for example. Your key is actually a Ford key. It's unmistakably a Ford key, but it does have a Volkswagen logo on it. And it does use keyless entry as well. So you have that black square there as a touch point to lock your car. You're getting some nice roof rails on top, which I really like the look of to complete the look of this car. I really like the silver paint and I like the subtle badging here. Instead of like wild track slapped on the back, you have Amarok Adventura just neatly stamped here on a little compass badge. And of course here at the back, we get LED rear tail lights, which I really like the look of. They've got a very distinct shape. Although what's interesting is that the indicator is so small. It's only this little section of the tail light back here. And then you get Amarok stamped into the tailgate here and another V6 badge as well. So overall the badging here I think is done quite tastefully. Although this top Adventura trim loves its chrome as we see here on the rear bumper. And something that is a bit annoying is that when Volkswagen made these rear bumpers for the Ute, they took out the little side steps, which I found very handy on the new generation Ranger. And yes, of course, underneath here is a full size spare tire. Now what I love seeing on an $80,000 Ute are rear disc brakes. I think it's a step in the right direction and very suitable for the price tag. I think drum brakes are fine, but they're more of a cost saving method. And now if you get the Panamericana model of the Amarok or this Adventura model, you're gonna get monotube shocks, which help keep this ute nice and stable at high speeds when cornering. So that's a very interesting distinction if you're looking to spend more money on your Amarok. Now the new Amarok has a really smart tailgate because it locks with the ute. So when you unlock it using the key, it will unlock as well, which I think is quite useful. Now this rear tailgate also has a torsion beam in it, so it's really light to move up and down, but it's not dampened. So if you go to drop it, it will drop. Now this rear cover here is electronic control from the back here or you can actually use a button on the back like a rear tailgate you like you'd find on an SUV to open and close this or you can actually open and close it using the key so with two presses here on the key it will slide open you can stop it at any sort of way to you know give yourself more coverage or less coverage or completely open it all the way which I think is so clever 
Now this top spec Amarok uses leaf springs in the rear, which actually is something you can't really tell when you're driving around all too much, but it also means you're not gonna compromise on your payload capacity. Now this top spec also gets this tub liner. You also get a 12 volt socket here in the rear, which I just wish would have been replaced by something like an AC plug, which might have been a bit more useful. But unfortunately we don't get the cool little features like you get on the Ford Ranger. We don't get a ruler there at the back, um, but we do get some areas for some cup holders. So yeah, there's some small things that Volkswagen have left out probably in the name of being a bit more separate from the Ford Ranger, but the things I thought were a little bit useful. Now, what I like back here as well was you actually get two lights in the back to illuminate this rear, which I think is quite good. And also, as you'll notice, it has a very wide opening and a very flat opening as well, which means these wheel arches shouldn't get in the way if you're trying to put big wooden pallets here in the back. So while this is a luxurious ute, it actually doesn't compromise too much on practicality. Now jumping into the Amarok, the first thing I notice is that my butt crack gets absolutely violated by these seats when I jump into them because the high bolstering they have. Jumping in, there are some familiar Ford features in here like the door handles, the shifter, and some of the screen layout here. But to be honest, this is one of the best brand collaboration interiors I've seen. Now other cars like a Toyota Supra and a BMW Z4 or a Subaru BRZ and a Toyota 86 or a Mazda BT50 and an Isuzu D-Max, you could cover the badge on the steering wheel and you could easily guess that uh, the interior was from a certain car brand. Here, it's a bit harder to tell because Volkswagen put a major amount of effort in here and it pays off. So we've got these really nice seats. Yes, the bolsters are quite aggressive, but they are very comfortable and they look very Volkswagen-like. They've got a dual tone effect to them. That dual tone carries up here under the dashboard with some stitching running across the top and up here on the top of the doors. I really like the effort Volkswagen's done to put their steering wheel in here as well. This ute takes everything that's good about the Ford Ranger and they've just put a Volkswagen spin on it, which is done really well, especially the center screen. It really does feel like Volkswagen's center screen. It's got this familiar buttons like you'll find on a Volkswagen Golf product, for example, but you'll find all the familiar features here if you've been in any sort of Volkswagen product using a touchscreen, which I think is a really nice uh, continuation of all the different softwares and screens like you'll find in every Volkswagen. So it doesn't feel like this is a completely different vehicle from the cars made over in Germany. Now we have these nice hard rugged buttons down below, which are very useful, but unfortunately there's no hard climate buttons, but you do have a nice volume knob, which is very prominent. You also get a wireless charging pad, two USB ports. You've also got a 12 volt socket. You have your trailer uh, brake controls here as well, which are neatly integrated. Graded. You do have your familiar Ford shifter, but I'm not complaining about that at all. And I do like the materials used here. There's no gloss black plastic in this interior, which is awesome. Instead, they use this like gray striped material, which just looks nicer than gloss black plastic, if you ask me. Some very simple 4x4 controls down in uh, the middle here, as well as an electronic handbrake, some cup holders, and a okay amount of center storage here. Now this screen is very customizable, which I really appreciate. It's all the things that I loved about the Ford Rangers screen that uses this. And also I love the graphics that pop up when you change drive modes. They just look so good because yeah, Ford does the best graphics in the game and they've allowed Volkswagen to use them and that's why they look so good. And what I like is that the car that's represented in the screen here even has that same sale bar out the back. So it does feel like you're looking at your car rather than just like a generic car. And also you're not gonna find any Volkswagen haptic buttons here on the steering wheel. Instead, you're gonna find all these hard buttons here like you'd find on a Ford Ranger. This Ute does miss out on some auxiliary switches like we'll find on the top spec Rangers. Now the back of the Amarok is a familiar space if you spent any time in the back of a Ranger, but that's not a problem. So we do get this weird center armrest which has a locking mechanism and it has two cup holders in it. it's very comfortable and very easy to use. You also do have some air vents back here, a 12 volt socket, but no USB ports. Now we do get these floor mats, which say Adventure, and remind you, you did spend the most amount of money on a Volkswagen Amarok, so they're gonna reward you with that by telling you in the Adventure. These seats are also so comfortable as well. So for long trips, you're gonna be really good, especially if you're carrying four people, it's gonna be fine for those longer trips. Although it does feel a bit cramped in here as a five foot 11 adult. So my knee room's okay, but there's some sculpting back here to give me a bit more room. My boots do fit underneath the seat in front of me, which I can appreciate. And I have heaps of little pockets spread out all throughout the rear here, which makes it easy for me to be able to store any items. Now there's lots of hard plastic back here, but to be honest, like I said, this is a commercial vehicle first, so it's not a big issue. Although you're gonna have to be careful of the rear defroster here because the wires are very exposed. So if you're gonna accidentally grab them, that might be a bit of an expensive replacement if those wires get snagged by anything. But of course, if you don't wanna store things in the rear tray, you can pull this little latch, which is just hidden in this front pocket. 
and you can lift this rear bench up like that and you're going to expose some storage bins, although they're not very well trimmed and they're full of everything you need to change a spare tire. So you're not going to have a whole bunch of space under here, but it does give you more internal space if you're not carrying any rear passengers. Or if you don't want to lift up the seat like that, you can just pull this lever up here and the actual backrest will fold down and it will give you a whole bunch of internal space to store items on the back here. I'm here with Arthur Lundy. Um, Arthur is a really kind gentleman who befriended me when I was filming out here all the time and he's also a farmer. He lives out here in the countryside here in New South Wales and he also owns a Volkswagen Amarok. And so I wanted to ask him a few questions about his Amarok because this is a work vehicle. Because Arthur's building company, Lundy Building Group, is a company that is specialized in construction. So obviously you need a work vehicle like this to do some work related things. So Arthur has had a few uh, utes, but he really likes the Amarok. So Arthur, I just wanted to ask you, how come you bought a new generation Amarok? I bought the new Amarok because I had one before, one of the older editions. And then I bought a Mercedes ute and I had it for three years. And whenever this new Amarok, I was really, I was really pleased to be able to buy one of the new ones. So I knew you when you had a Mercedes X-Class and you decided to get out of that and jump into this. How come you went back to Amarok? Well, number one, Mercedes don't make Mercedes anymore. Number two, I was, I was really looking forward to getting back because I had one before and I really liked it. And as I do with this one, I think this is perfect car. Only two problems I have with it is number one, the sliding door on the top of it does, it, it can open, if whenever you have your keys in, the, in your pocket, it can open accidentally. And I've come back to it a couple of times and the, and the back of the door was open. I'd, I would like to some way of fixing that. And the other thing is the upholstery on the driver's side, the, the seat has uh, come away and it's only 3,000 kilometers old. So I have to see what to do with that whenever I go back to have a service. And finally, Arthur uh, has come up with a really genius solution for the rear tray of his ute. So without having to reach over and to the sides here, because this has a very high side area to get into the rear tray, Arthur has made and fabricated this really cool sliding rear tray, which is really easy to access. There's some locks on it and it just slides on some rails and it's a custom build that he made, which I think is really quite cool and worth showing off. And something that maybe could be offered by Volkswagen themselves. Something, something I really appreciate about the new Volkswagen Amarok is that it doesn't compromise on much when it comes to off-roading. It's still got a lot of ground clearance, even though you spent the most amount of money on an Amarok, the only problem I have with this car is that it has 21 inch wheels. Um, that's gonna be a bit of a problem if you like getting up close and personal with the dirt because they're probably more prone to getting damaged compared to the smaller 18 inch wheels you can get on the more off-road focused Amarok Panamericana. Now the thing that sort of annoys me is that if you wanna just get a Panamericana out of the box, you are gonna be missing features, but you do pay less so it sort of evens out. Now driving along here, these shocks do soak up the bumps really well. I was really impressed with the performance of the Ford Ranger on our little test track here. And the Amarok is no different. I love the brake feel here. It allows you to glide across the surface. And I just feel like I've got a lot of stability. I'm not being thrown around all too much, although the camera might see me being thrown around a little bit. Um, those side steps are okay, but they do limit ramp over angle just a tiny bit. Um, and they're not made of super tough material. So you gotta be careful when you're going through rough divots, for example, or dips in the dirt. Now, as we cruise through here, just getting a feel from some new sections that have formed thanks to some rain. Yeah, look, I just, uh, it's a really easy U to live with if you wanna go regularly off-roading. Um, I really appreciate the drive modes here. So I've got this thing in four automatic at the moment, which means it's sort of just gonna do the thinking for me when putting power to all wheels or just the rear wheels, which is pretty good. Now we do have hill descent control here, which I'm gonna test right now. And it means I just chuck on hill descent control by pressing that button and down I go. Now, off-road status is automatically thrown onto my screen, but it's not as comprehensive as the system you'll find on the Ford Ranger. Now, it's pretty slow. It's not really too quick um, to move down the hill, which is what you sort of want. And as we reach the bottom of this hill, we're not having any issues with any of our departure or approach angles. And oh, this section has gotten pretty gnarly recently, which is a good little test for this U. All right, cool. Well, as we make our way through the track here, yeah, look, pretty impressed. It's a 
off-road focus you. This is exactly what this is built to do. Now, as we go through some tighter sections here, we're gonna appreciate the fact this isn't a giant, massive, wide body Ford Ranger Raptor. Instead, we've got a bit of a narrow body on this, so it means going through tight sections like this section coming up is pretty easy to conquer. And look, no creaking or any sort of noises from the actual car itself, which makes me sort of feel like this is a proper well-built ute. It doesn't feel too, uh, you know, like it's, it doesn't feel too unfazed by this sort of twisting work on the body. Look at that, just eats this up. Now we can go to different drive modes, but I don't feel this is severe enough to need that. Um, traction is not really an issue here, so that's the only reason why I would be jumping into drive modes if we had traction issues. Now at some point you have to go back and earn your money that you spent on a Volkswagen Amarok, and that's when you have to actually live with this thing day to day. Now I've been living this thing for a week, and I can tell you this could absolutely replace your SUV. In America, it's not uncommon to drive around in a big pickup truck because they're just as luxurious, if not more luxurious, than an SUV, but people seem to like the space and looks of their pickup trucks. Now, that is quite common here, but I really feel like the next generation Volkswagen Amarok is a proper SUV alternative. And that's because it has really nice seats. It has actually a proper cover over the rear tray, which means you can electronically slide that open and close like you would on a power tailgate. And it also means that your things are secure in the back. And this thing has a nice velvety V6 turbo diesel motor, which puts out over 600 newton meters of torque to a 10 speed automatic transmission. It has radar cruise control with auto lane keep assist and lane centering assist, which means this thing will steer for you a little bit through corners. It has a Harman Kardon sound system, which is really good like for listening to the new Travis Scott album. This giant screen in the middle is extremely usable with using Apple CarPlay, which is wireless, which makes it really easy to jump in and out of this car if you're daily driving. Fuel consumption can be just under 10 liters per 100 Ks, which is what I've been averaging, which is actually pretty respectable. You have an auto park feature here as well. So if you're not so comfortable with parking a big long ute like this, you can actually just press that button and the car will do it for you. And I keep saying car because obviously all four wheeled vehicles are a car, but then you go into the categories and this is a ute. But I've been driving this thing and it really behaves a lot like a car, which is rewiring my brain to say car every time I say ute. And even though this is more closely related to a Ford Ranger, I can really feel the Volkswagen-ness of this interior. And it sort of just reminds me a little bit of the Volkswagen Touareg because that also had a V6 twin turbo diesel and that thing was really nice to drive day to day, but ultimately that was an SUV. That's a good off-road SUV, but it's not as rugged as this. And that's also a little bit more expensive. Now, something I love about this V6 diesel is that it has a little chirp to it. Like when you're going up this hill and you're going on the turbo, you can, hear, you can hear that turbo sound spooling up and it just sort of has a little blow off like sort of sound. I don't know, it's just like the turbo coming off spool. It sounds really quite good. It's a really nice motor. I really, really like this motor and every Aussie does as well because this car is gonna be having a very long wait list along with the Ford Ranger because they just can't make enough of these cars with these V6s in them. And unlike a big Dodge Ram or a Chevy Silverado, this thing is just really easy to live with and it's just big enough that it feels like a big ute, but it's just small enough that it can fit in places like my garage. But I do have to remove that top antenna uh, because it doesn't actually fit all the way in with that antenna that will snag the roof, but you just untwist that and it fits just fine. Now the brakes in here are gonna be really comfortable for people who are used to driving an SUV. They're not any too different. They have four disc brakes as well, which I find quite nice. And it's not like getting used to drum brakes. Not that you have to really adjust your brain for drum brakes, but it just feels more natural when you put your brakes down. And I have to commend uh, Ford and Volkswagen for making these leaf springs feel really quite natural. They don't feel too jumpy and they don't feel too like uh, rigid as well. They do a really good job of soaking up the bumps. Now at low speeds, you are gonna be finding that the steering wheel will Will require a lot of turning which can be a little bit annoying compared to something like an SUV but then once you get going it does tighten up so it actually has a nice variable steering ratio which I found to be quite good. So in terms of the handling and suspension setup, you've got uh, those upgraded mono shocks on the front and then you've got leaf springs at the rear. And those mono shocks for the Panamericana and the Adventura are quite impressive. I found this thing to actually be really nice to tear through corners and it's taken a lot of other utes by surprise that were sort of trying to keep up with me and then they found that the um, ute doesn't actually perform or handle like this with these mono shocks at the front. Although if you really start to get a bit too confident with it, it will drag the front through just a tiny bit and you will encounter a tiny bit of understeer. 
that's just down to the weight and uh, also just how high the center of gravity of this ute is. But it is actually a little bit of fun to carve up through corners. So I'm excited to see if we do get like another Vulcanshaw version of the Amarok to sort of enhance the driving feel of this V6 ute. And look, those rear leaf springs, although they're not the most ideal setup for a uh, nice handling package, they are good for um, increasing your load carrying capacity in the rear and they've been tuned really nicely uh, uh, with the chassis of this car to make it feel a whole lot more natural. It doesn't feel like you're bouncing around on the back or too stiff in the rear. But I have noticed a bit of drivetrain whining uh, a tiny bit from that 4A mode, which is that four wheel drive automatic mode. Um, this is something to be noteful of. If you want the most luxurious dual cab ute with the best tech and also one of the best to drive, you're looking at it. This generation Volkswagen Amarok is really impressive because they partnered up with one of the best ute manufacturers of the year, which is Ford with their new Ranger. That was a very smart move because there's no lame four cylinder diesels under here. There's a buttery smooth V6 under here and it's just what everyone who bought a first generation Amarok would want in a second generation Amarok. The only time will tell if Volkswagen has any plans to make a hot version of this ute again like they did with the Walkinshaw edition. But I'm curious to see how how this stands up against the incoming Ford Ranger Platinum, which is meant to be the luxurious version of the Ford Ranger, which is meant to go head to head with this thing. So yeah, it's a ute with few flaws, and that's exactly what you want when you're gonna be spending over $80,000 on a dual cab. Now, thank you so much for watching. My name's Cameron. If you wanna see more Volkswagen reviews on this channel, you have to hit subscribe, and let me know in the comments. Would you buy a Ford Ranger? Or would you buy a Volkswagen Amarok? And also, if you wanna let anyone know what it's like to own your car, you can leave a review on productreview.com. .com.au. There you can rate your own car and you can tell people if it's good, bad, or just okay. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.